So it's very critical to be looking at a stock on multiple time frames. And if you just check on one time frame, you're really not going to get the full picture of what's going on in the stock. So over here, I have BlackBerry pulled up. And when I'm day trading, I like to use the shorter term time frames, such as the five minute, the 15 minute, and the one hour. But I'll always take a look at almost all the other time frames. I don't use the two hour or eight hour, 12 hour that you see here typically, but I use the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the one hour, the half hour, 15 minutes and five minutes, one minute, very occasionally I'll pull up the one minute. One minute is really more if you're really scalping or if you really wanna see the quick changes in the trend on a stock. You can actually see quite a bit of information on the one minute as well especially if you're doing some really short-term trades you can see it um yeah over over here you can see this is almost a little bit of a double bottom on the one minute it broke this support this resistance and then it shot through and that signaled a little bit of a change in the trend so you do get a decent amount of data even from the one minute now let's look at blackberry i'm going to look at the weekly time frame because We've had that huge explosion recently, okay? And I was, I was trading this and I actually bought it around here because I knew uh, this is the U.S. Let me, let me check. Is this the U.S. one? No, this is a Canadian one. But I, I knew the critical resistance was around 18 bucks from here. And this is years back, 2017. So it is actually important to really look back at all the data from even years ago. So I was looking at this and I saw this is a critical resistance point. And why? Because that was the highest that the stock has seen since 2013 when it was around that same price. It double topped at that area. You see over here, right here, and right here. And then after that, where's the next resistance? It was all the way upwards of here, which happened to be um over thirty dollars where did it go it went right around there and you see this is another resistance i was looking at because this was a critical support you see right here support 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 and then it broke below it so this would have become a critical resistance area so around here was my target i figured to be safe than sorry around forty dollars was my target because of this um but i did sell earlier just to be safe i tend to sell earlier than my targets because i really want to make sure i make the money because a lot of other traders know these targets and for that reason a lot of people are looking to cash out around those levels so i do think it's a good idea often to uh cash out before so that's what i was looking at and even on the monthly time frame i do find this interesting is that it went right to around this purple line, which is the 200 month moving average. So I was looking between all of these different things and I said, okay, $18 is critical resistance. I know that. I know that from 2018. I know that from 2013. If it breaks that, where's the next resistance? I said, it's over $30. So where did I sell it? I sold it right around here. I started to scale out right around here. I, I didn't chance it for that next resistance area. I started to scale out right around here to be safe. And I'm looking at years, years ago. This is, this is, you know, 10 years ago. And I'm using data from 10 years ago to make trade decisions. And you, you'd be surprised, but it works. You look back and even two years ago, three years ago, five, 10, 15 years ago, resistance areas and stuff will come into play let's look at uh let's see if i have intel up here i don't know if i can add it not letting me use my keyboard yikes oh there it is perfect okay so i throw up intel over here look at intel on the monthly where are we this is in the year 2000, 2000, over 20 years ago. And where's our resistance? 
that's where it is and you could see it's struggling around this area kind of top double topped over here now it's making another attempt and if it passes this area then it's going to be a blue sky breakout and who knows how high intel is going to go you know typically when you see a long move like this a long drawn out consolidation and move like this i usually expect at least a double so if intel breaks this area if I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a double from there, which it's around 75 bucks. I wouldn't be surprised to see it go to $150 if it breaks that area. Actually, this looks like potentially a really large cup and handle pattern over here. So there's some potential there for the long term. And also this is a fairly valued stock as well. Their PE ratio is quite low. And obviously they're a big company. They make a lot of money and stuff like that. But they do have a lot of headway and uh, competition from AMD and NVIDIA, which is part of the reason why the stock hasn't performed nearly as well as those other guys. Okay, but I'm not going to get too into that. I'm just showing you of how resistances even years ago, 20 years ago, actually still come into play. And that's in big part because traders and analysts and all these kinds of people are, are looking at those price levels from the past. Okay, so... When you do analyze a stock and when you want to make a trade, I think it's really important to be taking a look at all the time frames. Okay. Obviously not all of them, but you know, for me, five minute, 30 minute, one hour, daily, weekly, monthly are probably the most important ones. And recently I started to look at the 12 months and I take note of this. This is Intel on the 12 months. And even during the coronavirus crash, it held this pattern of a higher low every year since, okay, since, uh, what is it, 2008. So look, 2008, the bottom was $12.06, $12.06. 2009, the bottom was $12.05. So that's essentially a double bottom, okay? And double bottom can happen even though it broke it by one cent. It's not enough to say it's not a double bottom. It's got to have a little bit more follow through on the break so we had a double bottom here on intel and look ever since then every single year has a higher low i think is this one low 1923 low 1916 yep so every single year since then had a higher low 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 here 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 take that in Every single year, it hit and held a higher low. Good pattern. So this data is critical. Even you want to even be looking at the yearly. How's it performing on the yearly? Back then, it was the same. Right here. Every year was a higher low every year. And then once it broke it, bang, that signaled a long-term consolidation. And that was in 2001. As soon as it broke that support, it signaled a long-term consolidation and pull back okay so it's critical to be looking at a stock on every time frame to really get that full picture so i do think time frames are really important and the thing with the time frame is that you're going to see patterns on every time frame you're going to see a bearish head and shoulders on one time frame while you might look like a bull flag on another time frame okay what i the way I take that in is longer term time frames have more weight. Okay. So there might be a bearish pattern on a short term time frame. Well, that typically means in the short term, there's probably going to be a pullback. But if the longer term time frames are bullish, then the bullish pattern is stronger. It has more weight. Okay. So let's look at Ethereum. I saw this today. Okay. Definitely long-term bullish trend, very strong, higher lows, higher highs, very strong chart overall. Now the chart had a short-term, a little bit of a bearish head and shoulders up here. Okay, shoulder, head, a little bit of other shoulder break. And it signaled, you know, and then a retest, retest over here around the uh, previous support became resistance. Big pullback in the short term pulled back 150 bucks or so and then there was a volume spike that volume spike signaled the temporary bottom and then you saw this big move and now 
we're in an equilibrium. And an equilibrium is we set a low, a high, a higher low, a lower high, a higher low. Actually, this isn't a lower high. We broke it by a bit. Okay, but we're pretty much in an equilibrium now. So even though there's this bearish pattern on the five minute time frame, it doesn't mean that Ethereum is turning bearish and that it's going to go down. It usually means it just in the short term time frame. On the time minute, on the five minute time frame, there's going to be that pullback, you know. But you look at the longer term time frames, you look at the daily, and it's strong. We got higher lows three days in a row now. Okay, we're trading above the four day moving average, the red line over here, and the eight day moving average, the green line. We're trading in the upper Bollinger Bands. We've got still higher lows on the daily. We had that double bottom over here. The daily time frame still intact, still looks healthy. Even if the hourly didn't look so good, not too long ago we were on a downtrend on the hourly. You look on the daily and you really get a better picture over there and you say, okay, you know, it might be on a short term downtrend over here, but on a longer term time frame, it's definitely still bullish. So it really depends what type of trading you're doing and what your outset is how long do you plan on holding for if you are planning on holding for a longer term then it's more important to be looking at the daily the weekly and the monthly chart as well as the yearly chart if you are planning on doing a swing trade well maybe you're going to want to be looking at the daily and the weekly and even the monthly you know and if you want to do a day trade i do think it's important to look at those other price levels as well but, you know, for day trading, I think, you know, the one minute, the five minute, 30 minute, one hour and the daily chart and even the weekly can have an impact when day trading. And those are ones that I would like to look at when day trading, because you'll see on those time frames, you'll see the supports and the resistances. OK, uh, for a day trade. You know, your day trading, you see on your day trade. It's pulling back here. Okay, where's our support? Well, we got the Bollinger Band. That's the support. Four-day moving average. That's another support. The 20 EMA, exponential moving average. That's our support. That might be a good place to enter for a short-term trade where I could buy it and then I could flip it at a higher price. Okay, so it really depends on your investment strategy. If you're investing for the longer term, you want to be investing in good, strong companies that have good longer term time frames. Let's see if I have it in here. Bombardier. Bombardier short term daily looks pretty good. We set a double bottom here. We broke out. Okay, we had this long consolidation pattern. If you look on the weekly, it looks a little bit like a bull flag or a falling wedge. And then we had a breakout. Pull back, but we held previous resistance area as support. Continued to go up, had a little bit of a cup and handle right there and continued higher. And if you look at this chart, Bombardier, you'd say, oh, this is a good company. It's doing well. It's going up. Great. You know, this could be a good investment, you know, but then you look at the longer term time frame and you look at the weekly and you say, hmm, not so much. You, it tells a completely different story over here. The stock got crushed. And yeah, sure, we're rebounding now, but that doesn't mean that the overall long-term trend has changed. It might still be down. You look far back, and this stock has been on a downtrend since the year 2000. And this chart looks terrible. Doesn't look great. Okay? The most interesting thing I've seen, though, is this huge volume spike over here right near the lows. So that could signal, you know, maybe things are changing, but... This is still a brutal long-term chart. So, you know, does this look like a good long-term investment? Overall, right now, no, it doesn't. Okay. This is the monthly over here. Let's see on the monthly what kind of data we got. Okay, so on the monthly, we're getting higher lows every month. Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low holding the middle Bollinger Band on the monthly as support right now. Okay, but the 20 exponential month is the resistance. So what you know now is 
if we pull back any more this month on Bombardier, you know where the support is. It's the low of last month, which was 56 cents. Quite a big difference from what it is now, 92. Okay. You know the that's the support. Now this month is almost ending, and we're probably not going to go much lower than we hit this month, which we hit a low of 85 cents because the month's almost done. So now the low of 85 cents, if it doesn't go any lower this month, next month, that's going to be the support, the 85 cents mark right over here. So what you're looking for next month is, does it hold the support from this month? Because that's been the pattern, higher low every month. If it breaks that pattern, that's definitely a negative sign. And that could suggest that the trend is now changing back in favor of the bears because it's been in favor of the bears for a long time. And, you know, I, I was watching Bombardier back here and it was doing well too. And I was trading it and I thought it was a great investment. I thought it was going to go up and then this happened. It got crushed. And, you know, you look at some of the same things. Now it didn't have a higher low every month here, but it was riding that four month uh, simple moving average. As soon as it broke that bang, it signaled a change in the trend. And for the most part, it held that or at least the eight month uh, simple period uh, moving average as a resistance. Now, once it started to break above, back above those uh, resistances, we see where it broke back above the four month, the red line and the green line over here, then that signaled at least uh, a short term trend back in favor of the bulls. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it at that with this section. I'm, in, I'm going to get in, into a lot of detail when it comes to technical analysis and my strategies and the things I look at. And I gave you a bit of a breakdown over here on some things, but there's so much more to talk about, such as the RSI, such as, uh, sorry, such as the MACD. This is the MACD over here. This is the RSI. Okay, there's so much more to talk about with the volume, the MACD, the RSI, the Bollinger Bands the different types of candlesticks and patterns and the moving averages and so many other things that I'm going to be talking about in this section. But this part, I really wanted to give you a breakdown and I really wanted to just stress the importance of looking at a stock on multiple time frames because one time frame will not tell you the full story or will not give you the full picture. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that here and uh, continue on to the next section.